Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen, Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. I actually have a free choice here because all my daily quests are neutral, so I will take Priest. But man, if this run sucks, I'm going to put Priest officially on the sideline. Alright, well, we got um, some interesting choices here for the first rare. I don't particularly like the Assassin, it's a good finisher card, It's but it's not very tanky for a 7 mana minion. So if you're not finishing the opponent off, it's not that great. And Priest, of course, not a particularly great burn class. With that said, it can be good. This is the safest pick. It's pretty junky, but it is a 2-3 two, for 2, so it's definitely playable. And then this guy is a 2-1 one for 1 that you can heal. So for a Priest, that can be like a 2-3 two, three for 3. Probably not as good as just like a Shadow Boxer, honestly. So the question is, do you want to commit to this big fatty cake, fatty cake baker's man for some endgame burn? Or just take the safer choice? I'm going to take the safer choice and go for some more tankier, expensive cards later. Oh man, Northshire Cleric or Mind Control, both are great. You really want at least one of each in the arena. So it's one of those things where it's like if you end up seeing the other one, you're going to feel good about this pick. If you're going to see the same one, you're going to feel bad. I'm going to take the Mind Control because Priest, you want to go for a slow game. And with Mind Control, you have an answer to anything. That's not the case uh, generally because Priests have pretty spotty removal. So that's like one of the few cards that will actually just take anything out um holy fire for healing and removal sludge belcher for taunt i mean sludge belcher is like one of the strongest cards in the entire arena but i think it's important to have the damage and the healing so we'll take the holy fire ah there's the second mind control so had i taken north shark cleric before i'd feel good about seeing mind control here if i'd seen north shark cleric here i'd feel good about taking mind control there it just sort of sucks so the sheep i don't like so we'll take the medic okay this guy terrible so we'll take the fairy dragon it's the only playable card yeti or ogre hmm both do win games but there's i think fewer good expensive minions than four drops so um we'll take the ogre there's a bunch of like three fives for four that are all good oh man now the game just rubbing it in my goddamn face well you really don't want more than one i don't think so i'll take the mr tinkers there maybe that's wrong maybe you do want more than one i don't know we'll take cult master for some cards north sea kraken all right, let's crack some balls. Second Holy Fire. Damn, well, I really kind of wish that um, I had taken the Sludge Belcher last time, but I'd be happy with the Holy Fire here. So I've just, I think this is um, honestly kind of unlucky. Holy Fire versus Sludge Belcher early on. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a decent choice to pick Holy Fire. Yes, Sludge Belcher is like the best taunt card in the game, but Holy Fire is unconditional removal, which pretty slack, and healing, which is important. So it sucks. I'm going to take the second one. These are just trash cards, so just got to do it. Velen's Chosen is an amazing card over the Tiger. I love the Tiger, but Velen's Chosen is just too amazing for words. So we'll take it there. Here I'm going to take the Squire over the Dragon just to have at least one one-drop in the deck. Ah, wow, the Heal or the Taunt. That's, um, hmm. Well, I've already got the Medic and two Holy Fires for healing, so we'll take the Taunt this time. Um, uh, Mind Control tech. Man, that can really swing some games. For one more stat point, you lose this battle cry, but you do gain the ability as a priest to heal it up to be a yeti. It's overpriced, but yeah. If I weren't a priest, I might actually take mind control attack here, because I can swing games. But the blade master for priest, I think, is just more solid all around. Oh, wow, this is a shit pick. Hmm. Hmm, yeah. So I don't want this five drop. Well, priests can do a good job healing this guy back up. Mind Blast, nobody ever sees it coming. Powered Glory, I, I don't know. I don't think I need that with Tournament Medic and two Holy Fires, honestly. Ah, uh, but you know what? I hate, the, I hate this thing. I don't care. I don't care that it's, you know, healable by Priest. I'm just going to take Mind Blast. Nobody ever sees it coming, and um, I think they can be strong. There's a North Star Cleric, so that's good that I got one of those. Fairy Dragon, over and over and over. Squire is just bad. If it were a 2-1, I'd probably take it over the Fairy Dragon, but this, I don't want to use my hero power on turn 2 to make this a 2-2, two -two, so I'll take the Fairy Dragon. Holy oh, Nova, well, I'm lucky I saw that. It's important to have mass removal, and that's the only one priest to get. Uh, this is the only good card there. We'll take the 5-5. Five -five. Hmm, Saboteur. Ah, uh, no, we'll take the Crazed Alchemist. All right. Uh, I could go for this, but honestly, with Kraken, Ogre, and a Mind Control, well, it's only three expensive cards. I could reasonably take this. We'll take the Knight, though. It's just a much better mid-game card. All right. Heelbot is better than the other junk. A second Kraken. Well, the problem is these are actually unplayable, so I will take a second Kraken. It's risky. I might not uh, live just to play those Krakens. This is obviously what I got to play here. Now, the Circle of Healing works... Oh, man, that works well with the Injured Blade Master. But it also works badly with, well, it works well with North Star Cleric and the Blade Master. It works well with nothing else. So we'll take this guy for some more removal. Ugh. 
Well, I guess we're taking that guy. Auctioneer? Oh my lord. This is bad. Um, what am I gonna combo with this? Maybe I'll get like one card with a Mind Blast or Shadow Word Pain. And I didn't take Power Word Glory. There's no Flash here. There's really like nothing that goes with this guy. I'll take the champion. Thought Steel is excellent for some card advantage. Fen Creeper. Well, it's no Sludge Belcher, but it'll do, pig. It'll do. And I get another chance for this guy. Hmm, put a copy of an enemy minion into your hand. So you're, you basically get to play a minion that your opponent had, but you have to pay two extra mana to do it. Ah, oh, man, is that worth it? Okay, I think normally I would take the Golem for some endgame finishing power, but to experiment, we'll try Convert here. I do sometimes make suboptimal choices when an expansion comes out, because it's like, well, I don't know what the right thing is, so we'll just take the new card. And usually it screws me, so I should probably stop doing it. I think I probably wouldn't do it if I were just playing for myself, but since I am playing, you know, for a channel and people watch this with, you know, some educational interest, um... I think it's worth it for me to, you know, experiment for science and, uh, you know, fail if I have to fail. All right, we're up against Aphotic, the Paladin. Honestly, this deck, I think was pretty lucky. I don't think I can complain much about this draft. I did get Mind Control for um, removal of anything. I didn't get Shadow Word Death, but I did get a Shadow Word Pain and Holy Nova. Holy Nova being especially clutch since it, you know, is mass removal, which is rare. Uh, this is actually not a bad mulligan either. Got a cleric, which is great against paladins. Takes out the recruits, and he is first. I find that I just get really annoyed by paladins when they're second because they almost always coin out some bullshit, and then play a recruit after that. And it's really difficult to keep their board clear, which is what you really want to do against them. But when they're first, they're just much less likely because then it's just you know one drop or bust. Okay, so does he have a three-two here? I mean, I do have an answer to it. He'd have to then have an urgent lance or a seal of light to get past this and let the uh, three-two kill my cleric. Alright, so this is probably an Avenge. Did he just top deck it? I guess he must have just top decked it or else he would have, um... Oh my god, it's not Avenge, it's a Noble Sacrifice. Whoa. Did not see that one coming. So the question is, do I heal this and get a card? I think it's a mistake. I think you gotta develop the board against Paladins. Get some power on, even if it's only two power. And then next turn, I don't think I want to coin this out. So if I have to, then I'll... Well, maybe I would coin it out if I had to. Hmm. Okay, well, here we get to draw a card. I don't think I have any urgency to coin out a 1-8. So I'm up a card now. Let's see if this is another Noble Sacrifice or a Redemption. It's not. Um, well, I don't have to worry about anything like Bear Trap, so I can just hit him in the face. Okay, that is most likely an Avenge. Oh, sh shoot. That was a mistake. Well, I'm committed now, but Consecration clears my board, so I shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have done this. It's Repentance, I see. Well, I guess it's good that I did it, because I was going to play this. I was not going to play around Repentance. It was just way too likely to be Avenge or Competitive Spirit. So I was not going to play around Repentance and lose 7 health. All right, luckily, uh, I catch a break, and he does not actually have the Consecration for once in my life. Let's think. Um, do I want to get another card here and then have nothing else going on? Well, the, the advantage of um, healing this is actually that I can then pop the bot and keep the Cleric alive. Otherwise, the cleric takes out, or the bot takes out the grunt and the dragon. I'm gonna do it though. I'm gonna let the the shielded bot do its thing. Um, do I kill it right now? I think I'm just gonna kill it right now. I'm not gonna risk blessing the kings. So he goes up a card, but I went up a card from the North Shark cleric, and from taking out noble sacrifice, and from taking out repentance, all of which did nothing. That's why he's got five to my seven right now. So I feel like that's okay. Already got a 5 drop and it was a good one. Killed the cleric before I could draw any more cards. That's quite unfortunate. Do I play my Fen Creeper here? Or do I go for this guy? I'm gonna go for this guy because that Squire is actually really solid here. In context, it finishes off the Kodo after it kills my Senjin. And it puts out 6 power, 6 toughness versus just 3 power, 6 toughness, which could be important if I'm in a board fight. Holy Fire is just worse than Starfire here because I've taken no damage. But, you know, if you ever do play Holy Fire and aren't taking any damage, in a way, that's kind of a good thing because it means that you've just really won the board fight. Does he have a secret here? No, he doesn't. Okay, Holy Nova is not that useful. I think the right move here is we trade out the Squire. And since he demonstrated with the Kodo on the board that he didn't do anything good, he doesn't have any good buffs or anything. There's no reason to throw these creatures away at that pit fighter right now. I'm going to get the damage in and then play my ogre. 
Now, I know the old saying is don't let paladins keep creatures, but he demonstrated last turn that he had no buffs of any kind. So, I feel like it's safe to, you know, to get the creature out and get seven damage through, which is a significant amount of damage. Okay, he's going to heal himself, which is just going down a card, basically, and then he plays an irrelevant card. Well, no matter how overpowered your class is, um... You are going to have a bad time if you have bad cards. Alright, that was a pretty good top deck. Yeah, so we're going to get to kill that guy with a cool 6 damage. Do I trade 6 damage away for a killing a Leper Gnome? Yeah, it protects my other guy. Might as well. I finally take some damage, so this guy's Inspire could actually be useful after I heal the Boulderfist Ogre. Kraken's coming on. I got more removal with Holy Fire. It's just really difficult for me to lose this at this point. Two Krakens coming on. All right. Well, let's uh, just keep it simple. We'll heal that up. And then I could just kill this thing, and in fact, I will do that. I don't mind damaging my stuff to get that thing to go away. Now my Krakens are free to attack his new targets. With the Ogre, I can deal up to 10 damage, so there's pretty much nothing that he can do. Blessing of Kings, definitely a move of desperation. Okay, well, we got the kill. The question is, how do I want to do it? I have a lot of different options here. I could make this, this, make this have 6 health, 8 health, and then just whack. Or I could throw my ogre away, and then it has one health left. Ah, it feels like a waste to use the kraken. Hmm. But the kraken's a 9-7. I mean, it'd be crazy not to play it this turn, right? So, yeah, we'll just do this. And I guess I could throw my Fen creeper away. Generally, you want to keep your higher health minions out, though. So, yeah, we'll just throw the ogre away. That's fine. Kill the recruit with my little guy. So I have a 9-7, I have another 9-7, I got Velen's Chosen, and 3 damage across the board, he's down to 2 cards. If he played a uh, Deathwing, it would actually be kind of interesting. Well, I'd have to play the North Sea Kraken, shoot the Deathwing, and then I, the North Sea Kraken would trade with the Deathwing, and I'd still have other cards. I just top deck my control, so never mind, it was all going to be fine. Can I kill him? 9, 12, um, 13, oh my god, could I have killed him before? Maybe I could have killed him before, I didn't check. 13, 18, 20 damage. No, wait, this actually gets spell damage, doesn't it? Aha, uh -huh, so I, I do, in fact, win with the face. Man, spell damage on Velen's Chosen is just the most ridiculous thing. It does, that card does not need it. I have no idea why it has it. But it does come up sometimes, especially with Holy Nova, or in that case, finishing the game a turn early, that I was going to win regardless because I had an answer to Deathwing. If you have an answer to Deathwing, you are probably going to win. All right, well, that was good. So, got a Paladin on my first run, but he had a really bad deck. Did he misdraft? Well, let's think. He had Repentance, which is really sketchy. He played a Noble Sack in front of a Northshire Cleric. No, 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 no. Did he? No, he did. He didn't play it on turn one. He played it on turn two. I think he, I think he just top-decked it and played it. And that was definitely a mistake. So, I think that he played badly and... As a result of how badly he played, I mean, that being such a bad move to put North, uh, to put Noble Sacrifice in front of a Northshire Cleric, he probably had a pretty bad deck, too. Okay, here's where I'd like to have the coins so I could play this on turn one, and then play this on turn two. Because I am the first player, though everything turns around, I play the Northshire Cleric, he can coin it at a response to it, and then I don't have Velen's Chosen ready to go. I'm still gonna play the Cleric, because as long as he doesn't have a 3 2. The Cleric is a good play. I've discovered through experimentation that holding on to your Cleric and trying to get cards with it later is uh, not as good. It's just throwing it out there. Because sometimes you do lose the Cleric, but then other times the opponent plays a 2-1 and you just feel like a total idiot for keeping the Cleric in your hand. So please just pass the turn, dude. D don't have anything. Don't have anything. No, 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 no. Don't have anything. Don't even flip that coin. You ass wagon. Don't flip it. Hazard. Hazard. No, 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 no. Oh, he didn't have it. Thank God. All right, well, I'm going to heal. Because right uh, Frost Giant, you want to use your hero power every time you can. <laughs> so let's see if he has a 3-drop um, that has more than 3 health. 
like a coin spider tank would be a pain in the ass here. Because I couldn't kill it with Velen's Chosen onto North Shire Cleric. As long as I as long as whatever he plays is three health or less, I'm okay though. Nobs Engineer, interesting. Hmm. Well, I think it's a mistake to heal the cleric for a card here. So I'm gonna throw out Mr. Tinkers. I think it's important to put this out. I think just um just making this thing huge, making it a, like a three five, I guess a three four, isn't as useful as getting an extra creature out. And keeping the surprise in your hand. Wolf Rider was gonna kill my North Shark Cleric anyway, as it is he gets to kill Mr. Oh wow, he's actually not gonna kill Mr. Tinkers. I think it's a mistake. I think you need to kill the cleric or the Mr. Tinkers, because it's just the bigger body. I think he played a little conservatively there. Alright, Clockwork Knight. It's gonna come down next turn, unfortunately. Mr. Tinkers came down already, so I'm not gonna get the spare part, but it's okay. So five five for five, which in arena is fine, and I can actually Deal up to four damage now with Divine Shield, so I might hang on to this for a turn if I need to kill something. He's been hoarding cards. He has eight cards to my six. One of them is the coin, and one of them is the extra card for going second. Argent Lance isn't good on this board. Does he have like a seal of light to make it do extra damage? Win the joust. That's one of those jousts. I think this is actually one of the few like well-designed joust cards. It's one of the few cards that's like, you know what? Yeah, you know, if you win the joust, it's kind of nice, but if you don't win, it's not like the end of the world. I feel like some of the other just joust cards are just way too swingy in, in a kind of an unpleasant way. Okay, so do I just trade Mr. Tinkers away so I can play the 5-5, five five, or do I make a 5-7? Well, the problem is... That's actually not a problem. I can make a 5-7, kill this, heal this up. So it's 7 to 3 to 5. Still can't kill it. Hmm. Or well, I could just trade this and have a 5-5. Five five. So, okay, well, let's look at the calculations here. Valen's Chosen, kill this, it goes up by 4, down by 4, up by 2 from my hero power. So it's a 3-5 and a 2-1. So I can have a 3-5 and a 2-1, or a 5-5 and a 2-1. Alright, yeah, that's clearly an easy choice. Definitely want the 5-5 and the 2-1, not the 3-5 and the 2-1. And then I can still put this on my dude. Make it huge. The nice thing about holding on to Valen's Chosen is if he uses a Peacekeeper on a minion... Velen's Chosen can save it, but if you put Velen's Chosen on first, then he gets extra mileage out of Peacekeeper or Humility. Now, here's a bit of a weird situation. Holy Fire might not kill a 5-drop. Oh, no. What are you doing? Blessing of Wisdom. Damn. So he's going to draw cards every time this thing attacks. Oh, jeez. That sucks. Hmm. Tournament Medic. Well, it's got to happen. I think Holy Fire is just too passive here. Because I have a 4-drop to play. So, kind of sucks, I guess, that um, he's getting a card out of that Blessing of Wisdom. Two cards, because this will attack again, I'm almost sure. But I think that was the best play. Now let's look at the damage situation here. 5, 6, 8, 13, 15, before accounting for the spell damage on Chosen. If Valence Chosen actually managed to, to help with both of these, which it might not. Uh, that's actually 17, right? 5, 6, this is like 4, 10, 15, 17 damage. So I only need one more damage to win if everything goes to his face. It's going to freeze that up. I see. Well, I think it would be a mistake to go for the kill now. I think I should just holy fire the 5-5. Five, five. Sucks that it wasn't a star fire. Of course, for that I'd have to be a druid. Ha! <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the extra card would have been nice there, in addition to the 5 damage. He could actually win this, although the mind control might be solid here. The problem is, if he plays a bunch of 4s and 5s, I might not get any good mind control targets, and then I'd be in trouble, because it doesn't, they don't die to Holy Nova, mind control is a waste. This also can't go down for 2 more turns, so if he plays anything huge right now, the mind control is going to be behind the times. Here now, though, it's good that I'm the first player, because he never really took advantage of his coin at all. So the fact that I get up to 10 mana first means that I'm more likely to be able to steal something with mind control before it's too late. Okay, play some spiders and a bunch of crap. Okay, this might be a turn for Velen's Chosen and Holy Nova. Yeah, I think so. Shadow Boxer, not... Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I can't Shadow Boxer and Velen's Chosen. So let's think about this. If I play Shadow Boxer... 
and I want a Holy Nova. I have to kill these spiders, which means I have to give them a card from the knight. If I play Bones Chosen on the medic, I can kill the spiders, and then Holy Nova kills this. The thing is, though, that if I do use the Clockwork Knight to kill these spiders, I can hit the medic with, or I can hit his regent with my medic, and still heal up with the Nova. And then also get a Shadow Boxer down. That does give him an extra card, but does he really need cards here? Hmm. Of course, if I do Velen's Chosen and Holy Nova, I can hit him for an extra 5 damage to the face. He drops, let's see, what, 14, and then down to 9? Uh... Hmm. Basically, it's a question of, don't want to give him a card. Alright, let's not give him any cards. So we'll put a Velen's Chosen on this. Hit him there. Holy Nova. Clear that board, and I'll give a, You know what? Screw it, I'm gonna give him a card. Five damage is over a third of his health. If that extra card he draws gives him a good answer, then so be it. But I think I've gotta take the chance here and try to finish this guy off. He has six cards to my five, soon to be six, so even with Blessing of Wisdom, he's still not actually ahead on cards. He heals up, that's unfortunate. So I'm a turn behind on the mind control, which sucks. And he heals away all the damage. Convert. Aha! So I can actually pay 9 mana for my own 7, or for my own 5, 6. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this and this. I'm going to cast the Convert now, because I might as well. And uh, do I want to hit this guy with 3 damage? And, like, heal it back up? Or do I want to just put 8 damage on the... I'm going to just put 8 damage on the face. It's a little risky, it's a little risky, but... I think it's the right move. I need to try to burn this guy out. I've got this thing standing in the way of his 5-6 from killing my 5-5. Five, five. Even if he kills this, this is still... Uh, well, if he has to kill this, I guess, it's still 3-5 damage. He's down 2. I don't have any burn, so I could actually end up losing if I don't draw. Oh, actually, I've already used my charge card, Holy Nova. And Holy Fire. I have another Holy Fire. It's like my last burn card. Okay, so he keeps his health the same here. Oh, he guys the Consecration. Ouch. Okay, this isn't actually that good anymore. So he can kill... Hmm. He kills that. Come on, Shadow Boxer. Kill the 5-1. This is a huge coin flip. Ah, damn it. That's just too bad. Silverhand Knight. Do I play it? Or do I play this guy? Man. If I hit him in the face, he's down to... You know, I think I, got, I, think I just gotta fl flood the board. And keep going for the face. That's my best move. I could have stolen this guy, but he's got a huge hand. He's probably got another big minion that I can steal later. And if he couldn't clear my board last time, it's going to be difficult this time, because this thing has 12 health. He has another Consecration. Alright, so those extra cards I gave him did matter, because that was off the right side of the hand. However, he could have had the... He had the kill for the guy, for the, the Squire, regardless with True Silver, so I don't know that that matters that much. That he spent 4 mana to kill a Squire and drop this, when the Squire is already dead, and this guy was already dead anyway. He's got a healing card... Ah, uh, he's like, well, what do I heal? Well, he has to heal his face. Mm. So that was kind of an interesting game. He just couldn't answer a 312. Well, Velen's Chosen is really the star there, but uh, yeah, that 1-8 that worked out really, really nicely because he just couldn't deal 12 damage and he didn't have a way to stop me from hitting him with 3 damage every single turn. It was like an unstoppable minion. Now, a Peacekeeper would have dropped it down to a 112 and that could have Helped him hang on for dear life. Okay, well, two good games, both against Paladins as the Priest, so my bitching about Priest earlier is certainly looking kind of whiny now. But then again, this was a really good draft, and I got some great cards. Alright, we're up against a third Priest! Tianyan102, damn! And this guy's golden, so at least we know he plays a lot of ranked, and is probably a pretty good player. You can get to 500 wins just by playing a lot. You don't necessarily have to be that good, but he did play a lot of ranked, so... I have to be a little bit careful. I think I win against the gold portraits more than I lose against them. Uh, I could just be self-aggrandizing here. I really don't feel like my lose rate to these guys is that high. It doesn't seem that, that way, but still, you got to kind of respect it. 
So I got my Squire out, which is good. And he has a slow start, like, like a true control paladin, or mid-range paladin. I really don't know the difference between mid-range and control, honestly. People make this stuff up, I'm like, who cares? But anyway, he's got a slow start. Um, he's now got a 3-drop here. Argent Lance is pretty solid, because it'll take out my Fairy Dragon and then my Squire. He loses the Joust, so he's just going to take out those two minions. I think it's actually worth it to coin this engine here. It sucks that I'm using up my coin and have no play on turn 4. But, yeah, it's the move. It's just got to be the move. So next turn I can go North Shire Cleric and heal something. I mean, it's not great, but I think it's worth keeping this guy alive. And then I just have to bide my time so I can play a 5-5 five, five for 5 on turn 5. So a good 4-drop here would go a long way, like a Yeti or something. I don't actually have enough damage to kill it. I only have 4, which is not 5, which is what most of the good 4-drops have. So it's a bit scary. Oh, man, does he have nothing else? Oh, turn three, he can only play a three drop. That is the kind of break I needed. So now I actually go up two cards, because I kill one of his cards, and then of course I draw that. This could have been a Gurabashi Berserker. I guess at this point, with him having all this health, I'd rather have a five drop, even a bad one, than this five damage. But honestly, I'm not that upset about having this. It's it's really nice as a priest, because you're so bad at burn, that um, he actually has a dragon. Jesus Christ, that's awful. It's actually kind of kind of good sometimes to have some extra burn in your back pocket. Okay, so I could take a coin flip with the Shadow Boxer and then trade my Sengen for it. Or I can just play a 5-5 five, five and throw away my 3-4 and 1-1. One, one. This is definitely the move. So it sucks that that Corruptor took out three of my creatures. But, you know, you just got to play what you got to play. And I think he's got, what, six cards to my six? I'm doing all right. This Lance isn't that great. It won't kill my guy. It won't kill this guy. There's a dragon. Jeez, doesn't die to Holy Fire. Damn. Okay, what I'm gonna have to do here, it's kind of shitty, but I just need to hope that um, either he chooses to tr throw his 6-6 six, six at my A5 because he's afraid of it, or that I get a lucky flip off a of Shadow Boxer. Mm yay, this is starting to get a little out of hand. He just had really good answers. That Corruptor, man, was crazy. Convert. Well, I, it's good to get a Sunwalker, but at the moment I kind of need to do more important things. It kind of sucks that uh, I only have seven mana, though. Because I could have played a Sunwalker myself if I had eight, or I could have played like Holy Fire and Shadow Boxer, or Holy Fire and Heal. Hmm, well, let's see what happens with this. Okay, so I killed this guy, and then he got a. Re you know, I was pretty lucky, all things considered, because obviously a Sunwalker getting redempted would have been a lot more problematic. The problem right now is what the hell do I play with my turn? Shadow Boxer heal his face, take a 1 in 3 chance of killing the Crusher, is that really my best move? Yep, yeah, uh, this game just got away from me unfortunately. Gotta, gotta make some bad moves sometimes, and it, it fails. So I'll play that because I got the mana so I might as well play it. And now I just uh, have a slow, ro a slow road toward death. That Corruptor was just perfect, because it killed my 1-3, and then it also traded with my 4-drop really effectively. Oh, jeez. So now Holy Nova finishes off the 6-1, but it doesn't kill off the 3-3 without Velen's Chosen assistance. Sunwalker just doesn't quite hold the fort here. Yeah, I can't even play a Sunwalker. Uh, should I heal, or should I Mind Blast? I'd rather have a point of healing myself and keep the Mind Blast on hand. So, I need to get Velen's Chosen, but then I don't know, I can't actually play a minion Velen's Chosen and Holy Nova in the same turn. This is just actually just a disaster. Alright, well, it always sucks to lose to a golden person, because it feels like if you could beat the gold person, you could really have something to prove, but this guy walked all over me, thanks to the Corruptor. And there's no point even drawing my card, there's nothing at this point that would matter. Holy Nova's my only answer. If I had a Light Bomb, I guess I could have hung on, but that's an epic, and I didn't get it, so that's that. All right, well, on to the next game. I think, you know, given what this was, which was three Paladins in a row, a.k.a. three of the best class in the arena by a New York mile for the first three games, I think I've done pretty well here. It sucks that if I lose the next game, I'm at 2-2 two and two with what seems to be a pretty good deck, but that's where we are, and uh, I don't think I can complain too much. Could I have done anything differently against that Paladin? Hmm. Maybe Holy Firing that Corruptor? Or wait, wasn't that turn 5? Yeah, that was the turn I played the Clockwork Knight. 
Wow, four out in a row. Okay. See, and this blizzard, if you're watching, is why it's important to balance arena classes. Blizzard has been accused of not caring about arena. Then they came out with some stuff, and it kind of showed that maybe we were premature in making that claim. But definitely, um, whether Blizzard cares or not is one thing. Uh, Success-wise, they haven't quite pulled it off. Actually, it's kind of amazing I played three Paladins and not a single Murloc Knight has appeared. That's uh, pretty pretty fortunate, I guess. The first couple of guys I was whooping them pretty bad, so even if they'd had a Murloc Knight, it still would have, I still would have won. All right. Well, this is actually a really strong start. Paladins have almost no way of killing a two-three. They have to like coin into a Wolf Rider. I mean, it's pretty bad. So that means I'm gonna get a four-four with a spare part on turn three, which is a lot of value. And um, it's you know, I've even got a chance of trading away whatever minion he plays. Oh, is he gonna play Spider Tank? No, a Grizzly. So the Grizzly does take out my two-three, unfortunately, but I do get an extra card for my troubles. And I will be able to kill his 3-3 three, three with my 4-4, four, four, barring any tricks, of course. Still, though, it was good, lucky for him that he had a 3-3 three, three to deal with my 2-drop. Because obviously I would have rather had a 3-2 and just kill this, so that Mr. Tinkers was free to rampage other targets. Mm. So the ghoul is actually going to trade with Mr. Tinkers, unfortunately. Thought steal. Um... So what do you do here? I could play a tactical cult master so that he kills it instead of Mr. Tinkers. I could put Mr. Tinkers back on him, but that makes no sense. Healing it makes no sense. I think I need to put a creature out. It doesn't make sense to play the fairy dragon because the cult master just costs more. Like, look, am I if I play fairy dragon, am I realistically gonna get cards off a of cult master later? I'd have to get this to stick and then play cult master. I might as well just play it and have it trade against into the ghoul to keep Mr. Tinkers alive. Because I could heal this guy up and be a 4-3 later. It could be a problem. Alright, Shredder, unfortunately, kills Mr. Tinkers and something else pops out. It's very annoying. Medic doesn't really do me any good. I think we just need to pop, just to make sure it's not a doomsayer or anything. Succubus. Crap. That was a really good flip, because it kills the Squire and lives to tell about it. At this point, what I'm hoping is that it becomes right to play Holy Nova next turn so that I can finish off the Succubus. Nope, so he got a really good flip with that Succubus getting to kill my 5-drop, and then he's just got a 5-6 staring down my 2-2. Two, two. Damn everything. <sighs> Alright, well, let's play this and see what he's got to say. So this thing takes out my Fairy Dragon and my Squire, and it still survives only Nova, which is kind of a pain. This thing's got a lot of health, though, so I might be able to get North Shark Cleric, heal, Thought Steal, and get some cards. So basically, if he has really big minions, then my having card draw is not going to be good enough. And this certainly counts. It's going to be difficult for me to kill this thing, because it's got four health, and he's going to take away three of my damage. Oh my god, the Bluegill Warrior is just like the worst thing ever when the opponent flips it, because he got an extra creature taken off the table. North Sea Kraken is just too little too late. Hmm, do I thought still looking for an answer? I think I have to. Got the Qualdir and the Hand of Protection. Terribly, terribly useless. Qualdir is just too slow. And the Hand of Protection is pretty much worthless. <sighs> wow. Uh, nothing I could do this game, I don't think. Just had two good cards. 2-T-O-O, -O, as opposed to T-W-O, -O, the number his cards were too good. North Sea Kraken's too slow, he's gonna t run away with it. If I could play this, like, this turn to kill the Murloc Knight, I might be okay. But as it is, these guys aren't gonna take enough damage for me to kill him off with Holy Nova. He's actually gonna silence away the Divine Shield. Glad to know that no matter where I placed it, it was gonna be worthless. Now, what's interesting is... I actually can kill this knight with a Holy Nova next turn, unless he does something crazy. As long as the knight hits something and this thing lives, I get to run this into the knight and then Holy Nova to clear most of his board out. So it just goes to show how important Holy Nova is. Seriously. Alright, so we run this in... No, wait. Actually, to Holy Nova first. If I Holy Nova first, this thing deals one less damage to me, but if I Holy Nova after, I get two damage healed, so yeah, this is clearly the right move. 
So we do this. Play Holy Nova. Now I'm a mana shy of actually playing a minion, which sucks. But I have to do this shitty ass move. But I do have a crack. I'm, I'm actually not out of the game. If he has a bad turn here, I'm in it. Because I can play Kraken, kill this. And then this should also trade with whatever he plays this turn. Seal of Champions is actually really good. Because it doesn't stop the Kraken from killing it. But it takes up three of his mana. Spider Tank is good to see. Because it'll die to the Kraken after the Kraken kills this thing. And then the Recruit's not a big deal. Oh my god, I'm actually in this game for real. Dog. Fen Creeper. Well, Fen Creeper and Senjin's attempting play, but really the Kraken here. It kills off this tank, and he doesn't even have the kill for it right now without help, so he can kill off something huge that he might play. If I just bide enough time till I get mind control, like if I can stay equal, I'm actually going to be in pretty good shape. I can even do shenanigans like Raider, heal the Kraken, have a 6-6. Six, six. I have a chance, but he could play a Peacekeeper here neutralize my Kraken and then it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough sell. This is one of those times the Defender of Argus isn't that scary, so I don't care about taunts because I was gonna be hitting the board anyway. Um He's just gonna do everything to kill the Kraken. But then he's left with a fairly unimpressive board. Alright, so how do I make the most of this? I could go for Raider Heal, and that leaves me with three mana. It's not really that good. I'd rather have a 3-5 and a 3-6 than a 6-6. Six, six. So the dwarf doesn't get killed by either of my minions, but it doesn't die to either one of them either. So this is looking alright. Now he's lucky he had an answer to my crack in that turn. Does he have an answer to this stuff? Well, he's got an answer for my Senjin, but not for the Fen Creeper. And I just found my mind control target. So this is looking pretty solid. Because this guy turns into a 4-4. Unfortunately, he still dies to the um, Dark Iron Dwarf. But he first gets to kill that. So I have a 6-6 here. And now I got a 3-drop, which is really good. Because I can play this heal and play a 3-drop. Which is very, very nice. Luckily, he doesn't have any more Murloc Knights. So that's good. Does he have an 8-drop here? He's got a Warhorse Trainer. Man, even with recruits out, this thing's still not good. Oh, uh, wow. I'm just so unimpressed by this card. It, it's kind of sad how unimpressive it is. He's got a Qualdir Raider. Well, that was a mistake. He used his hero power. Oh, my God. That's a huge mistake. He used his hero power this turn. He needed to play this first because a 6-6 six, six here would have taken out my Stormwind Champion. As it is, I get to kill it before it becomes a problem. Play this guy. Oh, it actually has a buff. Yeah, still, though. Kill that before it becomes a problem. Play him a guy. Heal this so it doesn't die to the recruit. So he has to throw both of these things at it. I mean, if he still had... Like, this thing should be dead. This thing ran into a 4-4 that could have been a 6-6. Six, six. This thing should be dead right now. So the fact that it's not dead is kind of a big problem. So he makes a technical mistake at a very bad time. I still had a pretty good chance of winning, even with that, thanks to me having a 6-6. Six, six. But the fact that he... Uh, had to now throw away more stuff to kill my 6-6. Six, six. Um, makes it problematic for him. Okay, well, I think we'll just keep it simple here with the Holy Fire. And let's heal up. Um, do I waste 8 damage killing a 1-1? One, one? Not in this top deck situation. And as cool as it is to save the Mind Blast as a surprise, might as well just play it. Garbashi Berserker, if I'm being honest, would probably have been, have been better there. Probably listen too much to my passions when I chose that Mind Blast. Master Jouster this is a pretty huge joust because it'll actually survive the Raider. Um, yeah, he gets a really big joust here. That was quite swingy. I don't have any more mind controls. I don't have any Shadow Word deaths. I just don't have an answer to that jouster. So he can actually crawl back up here now. Shadow Word Pain doesn't do me any good whatsoever. I can hit this and heal it and actually survive, so I'm going to do it. It kind of sucks, but it's the best thing I've got right here. Should I play this just for, to have a body? Um, I think so. Now, I can actually put this back into my hand if I wanted, but... Do I Shadow Word Pain or Recruit to stop these guys? You know, I think this is the right play. He's got 7 damage on the table, right? I take this down to 6, so one of these two cards has to deal damage for him to kill my Raider. If he doesn't kill the Raider, then this just keeps getting bigger. 
I feel like that was the, the right move. So he can actually win this, though, because he's got two cards. I have a time rewinder, which isn't great. He's got two cards. I'm in top deck mode. If he has a good card here, he's going to take control over the game, which definitely means that that one mistake earlier cost it, to, cost it for him. Muster for battle, pretty solid. Gives him the extra damage that he needs to finish off my raider. And Mukula's champion. Oh, my lord. I don't have any more Holy Novas. So I have to burn him out is the only thing. Wait. Wait, wait. Oh, no. He's not going to kill this right now because that would make no sense. Um, oh, no, because he has a recruit. All right, the recruit. This, so this thing never gets his, to hit his face anymore. And now he's got a bunch of 2-2s. Two hmm. Well, I definitely can't burn him out. So I have to throw my 3-3 three, three away at the 4-3. Um, and I just gotta play this thing out here, because there's no reason not to. Do I put this back in my hand? That makes no sense. Oh my god, I lost this. I mean, he's just got three 2-2s two in a top deck war, and the 13 health, I'm not gonna burn him out. Unless I get, like, a North Sea Kraken. But a North Sea Kraken at this point only equalizes me. Because he still has six damage on the table. Wait, no, unless like, the Kraken hits one of these. Oh my god, I actually could win with a North Sea Kraken. Would he get some kind of a removal card? No, he got something. You know what I could have used here? A sheep. Sheep would have been perfect. I could have just thrown this out here, and then no matter what, all the stuff would have died. What did I take over a sheep? I don't remember, but it would have helped me here. I got a squire. Damn. That's no good. So my second Kraken, unfortunately, doesn't come up. And Mukula's champion with muster for battle was a really good combo. Pretty lucky that he actually got that. I mean, he had th those were like his two cards, so the fact that he just got those back-to-back -back was very fortunate. He locked out of a loss after making a critical error. Did I make a mistake I didn't realize? Well, I could have sacrificed 8 damage to kill a 1-1 one, one at one point. But that one, but no, it still would have come through and killed me, so it doesn't matter. Boulder Fist Ogre. Too little, too late. I guess we might as well use this Time Rewinder to put the Divine Shield back. But he's got 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage. The Tron protects him from being killed, even if this Tron weren't there, I don't have enough damage to kill him. 6 plus 1 is 7, leaves him at 6, I don't, there's nothing I can do to deal 6 damage in one go. Don't have any more Holy Novas, this is a loss. Well, that was just, uh, that was just really shitty, kind of playing 4 Paladins in a row. Did I mess up in one of those Paladin games, like maybe this one somewhere that I didn't see, perhaps? But, either I didn't see it, or there was just nothing there. I think I just lost, because he, Mizumuko's champion is not a great card for most classes, but for Paladins it's a bomb, and he got them when he needed them. At this point, even another Holy Nova wouldn't have saved me. I'm completely out of cards, I have no light bombs, so I can see. Alright, well that was a pretty depressing video. So, what do I take away from this run? You know, you could say Boris don't come to any rash judgments, because you did play four Paladins in a row, which is quite unusual. But I got a really good Priest draft, and it just does not put up a fight against Paladins. Like, I really don't believe that I missed anything in the two games that I lost. Or that any drafting choices would have made the difference. I, I know it's, a, it's kind of a bold move to make, because clearly while you're playing, you can make a lot of misses. Maybe there was like a little, little extra damage I could have squeezed out somewhere that would have allowed me to win one of those games. But I think that even if we say that there was a way for me to have gotten a win there, I think what I can very confidently say is that had I been a different class it would have been easier for me to get a win against one of those two paladins that beat me, while still maintaining the wins against the other two paladins, because let's face it, they were pretty bad. So, yeah, I think Priest, even if this run ends up getting very lucky and going, uh, getting a lot of wins in a row, I think Priest has officially been sidelined. I mean, this is about as good of a Priest draft as you can reasonably hope for. Like, it doesn't have Light Bomb, but that's an epic. It's got Holy Nova, it's got Mind Control, Up Shadow Word Pain, Balance chosen, you know, it's got some strong cards, uh, there weren't really any really crappy picks. Yeah, I chose Mind Blast over the Berserker, but the Berserker's kind of mediocre anyway, I'm not sure it would have made that much of a difference. Would it? I mean, a 2-7, it could have mopped up some of those recruits, but it just wouldn't have been enough in that last game with the double Mookless champion that he top decked. So yeah, I don't think my misdraft or my drafting choice uh, really affects that much. I think it's just, you're, you're playing with a handicap when you play Priest. So yes, Priest is officially sidelined. Make sure you don't miss the next video because it's the last Priest you'll see from me in a while. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.